Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this particular video, we'll be looking into a very interesting topic in deep learning which is called as multi-layer perceptron algorithm. In the previous video, we already have seen single layer perceptron which is also called as perceptron algorithm. We have seen its detailed mathematical intuition with its geometrical intuition. We also have seen how to implement perceptron algorithm using Python language. We have seen almost every single example related to perceptron algorithm. With that, we also have seen the problems with perceptron. So in this particular video, before starting the multilayer perceptron algorithm, let's first look at the problems with perceptron. So first problem is the linear separability. We have seen single layer perceptron builds a classifier which is used to linearly separate the data. But what if the data is non-linearly separable? Then in that particular case, perceptron algorithm won't hold good. So that is why we have to come with such an idea which will separate non-linear data also. And that is why we have to shift to multi-layer perceptron. Next problem is the limited expressiveness. Now, the single layer perceptrons have a limited capacity to represent the complex functions. They can only capture the linear relationships between the inputs and the outputs. And that is the major problem. Now, the next problem is the lack of hidden layers. We have seen the diagrammatic representation of perceptron in that there were no hidden layers. Hidden layers are basically those layers which are used to extract the complex features. Now, if we don't have hidden layers, if we have only one single neuron for extracting the features, we won't be able to extract the more complex and intricate features from the data set that is provided. And that is why due to this lack of hidden layers, there is a problem of not capturing the complex relationships as well as complex structures from the data. The next problem is the binary outputs. As you know, perceptron algorithm builds a classifier which is used to separate the two different classes linearly. That is why it generates two outputs. But what if we have more than two outputs? Then in that case, we cannot use perceptron algorithm. And that is why we will have to shift to multi-layer perceptron. So these are the different problems which are associated with perceptron algorithm. I hope all these problems are clear and why we have to shift to multi-layer perceptron is also clear to you all. So now let's have an overview of what exactly multi-layer perceptron is. So basically it is a neural network with multiple interconnected layers. Now interconnected means it has different neurons and those neurons are connected with each other. So it has multiple interconnected layers which means it has multiple hidden layers which are going to be useful for capturing the features, the complex features as well as the intricate features. So I hope this is clear. The next point says that it has input, hidden and output layers. Obviously there will be one single input layer, there will be one single output layer but there can be many hidden layers. Also there can be many inputs as well as many outputs. Now, multilayer perceptron algorithm has a non-linear activation function in the hidden layer, which was not like in the case of perceptron algorithm. And that is why it can capture the non-linear relationships between the data sets. So I hope this is clear. Now, multilayer perceptron has hidden layers. We know that. Now, that hidden layers will be used to capture the complex patterns from the data sets. And that is why multilayer perceptron is very much useful as well as it is more important when we compare it with perceptron algorithm. Now one important point to note that multilayer perceptron or MLP uses backpropagation technique for training the data. Basically it is an algorithm designed to test back errors from output nodes to the input nodes. We are going to look into this important technique in the upcoming videos and we'll also see the detailed intuition behind it. And lastly, the multilayer perceptron can detect the nonlinear separable patterns. Now, obviously, this multilayer perceptron algorithm uses perceptron mechanism only. It has the basic unit as a perceptron. Now, as I said, it can detect the nonlinear separable patterns, but what exactly they are? Let's look at it with an example. So you can see here there are certain data points. Here we can see there are two classes, one is pink circles and second is blue circles. You can see how pink circles are covering the blue circles in between and these are arranged in two dimensional structure. You can see each and every data point can be represented with x coordinate as well as y coordinate. And if we draw a classifier which is nothing but with the help of perceptron then it cannot separate these two classes. You can see they are not completely separated 
and the accuracy will be not more than 50 percent. As you can see this data is non-linearly separable if we even try to draw many different classifiers with the help of a single layer perceptron it won't be able to separate these two classes completely. We'll have to use the concept of multi-layer perceptron for this and let's see how we can use this concept of multi-layer perceptron with the help of this example. You can see over here we have again two classes one is green circles and another is pink circles. You can see these two data are non-linearly separable. Let me prove it with the help of an example by taking a single layer perceptron. So for this particular data set if we try to use one perceptron algorithm you can see this is how we represent the perceptron and you can see there are two inputs x1 and x2 to this particular perceptron algorithm and when the model is created with the help of this particular perceptron training you can see this particular classifier is something which we get at the end and this classifier is not completely separating the green circles from pink circles and let's try to use any other type of perceptron algorithm and let's see whether we get the output as expected. Let's say this is new perceptron that we are going to use and with this particular perceptron after training we are getting this particular classifier. Now again you can see the green circles are not completely separated from the pink circles as this data is non-linearly separable. So now this multi-layer perceptron algorithm uses the concept of using more than one perceptrons for classifying the data which is non-linearly separable. What if somehow we combine these two outputs of these two perceptron algorithms and we create a single classifier which will separate the two data that is the green circles from the pink circles. By using the outputs of these two perceptron algorithms if we combine them and generate a single classifier we can separate these two data which is non-linearly separable something like this. So now the thing comes how we can combine the outputs of these two perceptrons and here the story of multi-layer perceptron begins. Now we'll see how we can do it mathematically with the help of the same example. Now if we take a look at this particular point with the help of this particular classifier we can calculate the prediction of in which class this particular data point will fall with the help of the finalized weight which are already present in this particular classifier. So as you know the weighted sum can be calculated with the help w1 into x1 plus w2 into x2 plus w0. Here w1, w2 and w0 are the weights. w0 is the bias weight and x1 and x2 are the inputs. So let's say for this particular data point we are getting the weighted sum as 2.14 for this particular classifier and if we apply the sigmoid function that is the activation function to this particular weighted sum we get sigmoid of 2.14 as 0.89. So basically the sigmoid activation function generates a value between 0 to 1 and if the value is above 0.5 then the data point lies in one class and if it is less than 0.5 then the data point lies in the other class. So for this particular case we are getting 0.89 as the output so this particular data point lies in the positive class. But still we cannot say that this particular prediction is correct because the classifier is not able to completely separate these two data classes and that is why we cannot rely on this particular output. Now let's move on to the other perceptron here as per this particular classifier if we calculate the weighted sum for this particular same data point we get 1.02 as the output and if we apply the sigmoid function to this particular output 1.02 we will get 0.73 as the output. So you can see we have got the output from both the classifiers the above one as well as the below one and now somehow we have to combine the outputs of these two perceptrons and we have to generate a single output and that output will be the final output which will say that whether this particular data point actually lies in the class. Now I already told you that we are going to use the outputs of these two classifiers to generate one but we will also have to set the weights for these two classifiers. Now as I already told you the weights defines the importance. In this particular case whichever perceptron classifier will be having more weight it will be having more importance. So let's say the below one 
has a weight of 10 which is greater than the weight which is associated with the above classifier which is 7. Now as the weight of the below classifier is more, it has more importance. You can also alter the weights as per the performance of the individual classifiers. Now using these outputs of the two classifiers for this particular data point and the weights associated with both the perceptron algorithms, we are going to calculate the weighted sum for this and that weighted sum will then be used for finalizing the output. So let's say we are going to calculate the weighted sum for the first classifier as 0 0.89 into 7 and for the second classifier it is 0 0.73 into 10. After multiplying both this we have to add them and we get 13.53 as the weighted sum. Now after calculating the weighted sum let's apply the sigmoid function to this weighted sum and once we apply it we get 0 0.99 as the output. So as you know we have combined these two particular classifier by calculating the weighted sum of the outputs with the weights and then we have applied the sigmoid function. Now we get the final output as 0 0.99. So as per the combination of these two classifier we are getting an output or the prediction value as 0 0.99. So I hope it is clear how we can mathematically combine more than one perceptron and we can create multi-layer perceptron algorithm to separate non-linear data and this is how it works. I hope it is clear. Watch this mathematical intuition again if it is not clear and you can post your queries also in the comments section. Now we use two perceptron algorithms. Here each perceptron works individually as a normal perceptron. Now basically we combined it with the help of the weights. We calculated the weighted sum and we applied the same logic as what exactly a normal perceptron uses. And finally we calculated the output for the prediction. So this is how a multilayer perceptron works. Now if we restructure this, how it will look? Let's have a look at it. Now if you know that basically in both the perceptrons we, we used two inputs x1 and x2. They were the same inputs in both the perceptrons, the above one as well as the below one. So we can write it at once only. Then in each perceptron there was a weighted sum neuron which calculated the weighted sum for both these outputs. So let's draw the weighted sum neuron for both these perceptrons. You can see over here, as you know, each and every input was having a connection with the weighted sum neuron. And if we draw it, if we restructure it, we get this type of structure where there is an interconnection between both this weighted sum neuron as well as the inputs. So I hope till this point it is clear. Now what we did, we passed the weighted sum value from the activation function for both this particular perceptron and we finally calculated the activation output. And that particular output we then with the help of the weights combined and again calculated the weighted sum with the help of the weights and the outputs of the previous perceptrons and then that output was sent to the activation function and the output of this particular activation function was the final output. So this is how we can represent the same example that we have seen before with the help of using two perceptrons. Now here you can see we have drawn one single figure. Here the first two neurons in the first layer is called as the input layer. Now in this particular input layer we have only two features that is why we have written two neurons x1 and x2. Next is the hidden layer which contains the two neurons which calculates the weighted sum associated with both these inputs and calculates the activation value before taking it to the output layer. The next layer is the output layer which is a combination of the weighted sum that is the final weighted sum along with the activation function which is the final activation function and it will generate the final output. And this is what is a multilayer perceptron. Now we can also add inputs to this multi-layer perceptron. Here I have added only one input x3. You can add as many input features as what you have in the data set. Also when you add the input neurons, it will get connected to all the neurons which are present in the hidden layer as shown in the figure. So now how things gets affected when we add more input features in this multi-layer perceptron, we'll have a look at it in the upcoming videos. 
so that was one condition of adding inputs to the input layer the next condition is adding neurons in the existing hidden layer so basically we can have multiple number of neurons in the current or existing hidden layer we can have a single hidden layer and we can have multiple neurons present inside it as and when the neurons are added it will get connected to the each and every input as well as to the neurons in the next layer that is the output layer also now again how things gets affected with the help of adding neurons in the hidden layer we will see it in the upcoming videos similarly we can have one more condition like we can add more number of hidden layers in the existing architecture now each hidden layer can have different number of neurons there are certain specific conditions for adding neurons which we are going to look into the upcoming videos and how it affects the architecture as well as how it affects the model will also have a look at it so this was one of the condition of adding more number of hidden layers in the architecture similarly we can have one more last condition for this particular architecture and it is adding the outputs now when it comes to multi class classification or when it comes to regression types of problems we will have multiple outputs then in that case the output layer will not only have two or one neuron it may have more than one it can have any number of neurons which will be used for multi class classification problems where there are more than two classes so i hope this thing is clear these were the four conditions which are related to multilayer perceptrons we are going to look into it in the upcoming videos and we'll also see an example how this conditions affects the architecture as well as the model i hope everything related to what we have discussed with respect to multilayer perceptron is clear to you all if you guys have any single doubt you can straight away put it in the comment section also if you guys have any suggestions regarding this particular video or regarding the upcoming videos then you can put it in the comment section if you guys like this video please it's a request share this video as much as possible with your friends so that they can also get benefit out of this and if you like this video please do like share and subscribe to my channel also hit the bell icon and don't forget to follow me on instagram also please join me on telegram link is in the description box thanks a lot for watching this particular video and have a good day ahead